Hello guys and welcome to my goth perfume video. So the aim of today's video is going to be just me running through some of my favourite perfumes, some of my favourite fragrances if you want, um, and kind of comparing them, pros, cons, that sort of thing. So let's get started. My favourite perfume of all time is this one. So I don't know if you can see. It's called, and you know, you've got to forgive me, I'm a goth. It's called Death and Decay. It's by Lush. And it, oh my god, it is amazing. So, this is a discontinued perfume. Okay, so before you all shout at me, I have a dupe. So, hold fire. So, right, let's try and open them up. I always really close it because I'm super paranoid that I'm gonna, like, I'm even holding it now. I'm like, I feel like we're gonna drop it all everywhere and it's gonna be horrendous. So, Oh my god, it's so good. Right, I'll run through the main notes for you. So it's got Ylang Ylang as the primary, and then it's also got Rose Oil, it's got Jasmine Absolute, Tonka Absolute. Um, yeah, I think that's it in terms of the scents. So yeah. I know that every goth's favourite perfume is supposed to be patchouli based. But I do have to say this is my favourite and it's Yang Yang based. Oh, I just love it so much. It's it's really hard to describe scents, obviously. So you'd ask why am I doing a perfume video? Well, I want you to smell it, that's why. I want you to smell it. Maybe you'll come round. Come round my house. You can all smell this. It's got sort of the tonka gives it a really nice uh, sort of sweetness to it, because tonka's a bit like vanilla bean. Um Rose as well gives it that kind of oldie worldy, almost sitting in a an old Victorian house, putting on your makeup before the day. You know that that sort of that smell, lace. This, you know, it sounds mental to compare a perfume to smelling like lace, but it smells to me like old lace and beautiful things. Yeah. That probably sounds absolutely mental, doesn't it? It's just so nice. I love it. I really do. It's my favourite perfume. I'm in fact going to put a ton of it on now. So you only need... The thing with Lush perfumes, which I can't fault them for, because I did work for them for a br very, very brief period, probably about six months. Oh, so nice. Because they are very strong, the Lush perfumes. So you are literally, you only need a tiny bit. As I said, this is my favourite perfume, and I've had it ages, and there's still about half left. I do have another one, and I also have a solid version of it as well. But those are those are it. Okay, so in terms of how much I like this perfume, I give this five baths out of a possible five baths. Um, <laughs> so we're going with that. We're going super goth there, guys. Five baths out of five. Okay, we'll put him up there. Next one on the list is this one. So this is called Deathly. Oh, hold on. You can't see it, can you? Can you see it? Can you? Oh, there you go. It's called Deathly Rot. It's by the Perfume People. Um, and this is. It's a dupe for the Lush Death and Decay. So when I first opened this up, I was a bit worried because. I really wanted it to smell like the Lush Death and Decay, and oh. And I do have to say, when you first spray it, it's not 100% there, it smells a bit sweet, but after it's been on your skin for an hour or so, it smells the same. Literally the same. Um, quite hard to talk in this, I've got a proper cravat going on here. I think I overdressed for the occasion of sitting in my bedroom talking about perfume. But there we go. Um, so yeah, this one, it hasn't got all of the essential oils in, okay, that's that's the thing with with the dupe of anything, it's not, never going to be exactly the same. The perfume people are vegan, however, so that is important to me, being a vegan. Um, even if you're not vegan, buying cruelty-free stuff is never bad, you know, you can't say no, can you? Uh, so primarily it's, well, it is just perfume in it, it's parfum, so... 
I can't talk about all the notes and things like that. But it does. Once you've sprayed it on for a while, I'm not going to spray it on myself because I've already got the actual one on, it, it smells the same. Um, you do have to use a little bit more, but that said, it is in a spray bottle, so you're not using as much as you probably use with the Lush one with the dropper. Yeah, so I'd give this... Uh, just because it takes a little while to develop, I'd give it, and it hasn't got the essential oils in, which the Lush one has, I'd give it four bats out of five. I think the original Lush perfume, this one, I think this was about, uh, I want to say about £35, pounds, British pounds. So that's about, probably about €32 Euros now, €30. Euros. Um, and this one, I believe, this was a present, but I have looked because I did want to get it for. I think this was less than £20 pounds for this, like, big old, I think it's 30 milliliter bottle. So that's really cheap for a perfume, especially a vegan perfume. So well done, guys. Really, really good. Um, I have my lovely sisters and one of my sister's partners to thank for this one. Part of my Christmas present from them, so that was really nice. Thank you. Um, yeah, so four bats out of a possible five bats. Okay, next one. I'm going to stick with the Lush theme. Um, yeah, why not? So this one is, again, I'm sorry, it's discontinued, I'm sorry. Um, but as you've just seen, I'm pretty sure you could find a dupe for it somewhere. So this one is called Imogen Rose. And one of the founders of Lush, I think, the, I think his name is Mark. I can't remember. I've worked there ages ago. Anyway, this is one of his daughters, basically. That's why it's called Imogen Rose. Goes without saying, it is a rose-based scent. Um, you've got revert oil in there, you've got tonka again, you have rose oil, you've got orris butter as well, which is the iris flower. Why I know that, I don't know, but there we go. Um, oh, it even says it on there. Oh, I thought I was being all clever. Anyway, this one smells like... Can I even describe it? Hold on. It's got that kind of old lace smell that the Death and Decay has because of the rose in there. But it's a bit muskier. Like, I feel like this is a little bit of an older scent. I am obviously a vampire, so it doesn't matter to me if it's a scent for an 18-year-old or a 68-year-old. It's all fine. But, you know, if you're going to go by mortal conventions, then possibly an older scent. Or if you just like an older scent. I mean, you don't have to be old to like an old an old scent. So, yeah, I'd say definitely give this one a go. If you can't find this, then... Honestly, it smells like a kind of musky rose oil. So you just get pure rose oil, and you're pretty much halfway there, so... This is around the same price point as the Death and Decay, so I think this was about £35. Um, if you do look on the Lush website, however, they sometimes bring back older products, so you may be able to get it on there still. Or eBay is good as well. Um, yeah. I won't go too much into the ethics of Lush because their animal ethics are fantastic, but I did not have a great time working there, so we'll just let that speak for itself. I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, yeah. So, oh yes, bats. I didn't give it bats. Oh, um, ooh, I don't love it as much as the others. 3.5 bats out of a possible... No, no, we're not going to do 0.5 because that is lazy. It's lazy. We're going to do cobwebs. No, spiders. We're going to do spiders. We're going to do three bats and one spider. That's how much this is. Three bats and one spider. That's what it gets. <laughs> okay, next. Last but not least, for the Lush. Okay, um, this is one of their solid perfumes. Again, this one is discontinued, but I do think they still do this. Well, they didn't until recently, anyway. Anyway, it's called Lust. This one's a bit different for me. It's it's just a very different smell. No, no other perfume I've smelled a bit like the Death and Decay smells like that 
So, right, let's let's get the thing. I'm not going to get the Lush Blurb up because I'll be here all day. Um, <laughs> so jojoba oil is the main one. So you can you can imagine. And then jasmine as well. And a little bit of yang ylang. A little bit of vanilla absolute as well. So same kind of base notes as the Death and Decay. So it's on that kind of spectrum. That kind of war, sort of woody spectrum. As opposed to bright and floral. Oh, not my not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. Yeah, I really like this one. I'm gonna give this Oh, look at the packaging as well, it's very pretty. And it's in a little tin, which is good environmentally. Again, all vegan, all fantastic. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm going to give this also... No, I'm going to give this three bats and two spiders. Out of a possible five spiders there. So it's possible five bats, possible five spiders. You understand. Spiders are the smaller increment. I don't know why I've come up with this crazy rating system, but we've done that, so we're sticking with it. Okay, three bats, two spiders. Lust by Lush. Okay, right. Right, next. I'm diabetic, by the way, and I think my blood sugar is going super low, so apologies if my speech is a bit fast and crazy. I shall try to slow myself down. Next one is Eden. So Eden are a perfumery based in Brighton, which is in East Sussex on the south coast of England. I lived in Brighton about, oh gosh, seven years ago. Um, and it's a lovely place. It's really bohemian. It's, oh, it's just lovely. It's right by the sea. It's got a big pier. If you ever see anything about the sea that's set in England, it's probably going to be on Brighton Beach. Um, it's stones, so there's no sand. Well, there's a tiny bit. We won't bet on the tiny bit. Danger sand. But, um, yeah. No, it's nice there. Anyway, I digress. Eden Perfumes. They are a company that matches the scent of commercially available non-vegan perfumes with a vegan alternative. Um, I have not been sponsored in any way by any of these companies, by the way. Just so you know, this is just from my own collection. So, yeah, this is... They do... Don't give them names per se, they give them numbers. So this is number 97. Okay. And it is patchouli based. There we go, we got there in the end with the goths. So it's a patchouli based perfume. Smells nice, obviously. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing perfumes, it's not awful. I'm going to get my trusty phone out here and I'm going to write. I'm going to write. I'm going to read. I'm not going to write a description for you. I'm going to read one. Uh, this is a classy floral patchouli scent. This fragrance will never go out of style. It has that dewy woody scent, but the added patchouli in this and the peony makes it more soft and fe feminine and more ladylike than other woody fragrances. This suits anyone from age 16 to 100. It's a classy and Timeless, feminine work of art, demure, reserved, so beautifully blended, it makes a safe gift for anyone. It's impossible to dislike this fragrance. Okay, I think that was a review rather than the description. Oh no, 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 that was the description. There we go. Anyway. Yeah, no, I, I really like it. So peony, patchouli. Nice. Um, I would say this is my favourite though, it's a little bit on the the fresher side than what I kind of like, I like quite musky, smells like it's been in the attic for 90 years, kind of level of perfume and this is a little bit more uh, more fresh it's nice though, I do like it it's just a bit fresher, so I'm going to give this 3 bats out of a possible 5 bats Okay, last but not least, this might be obvious to everyone, but patchouli oil, yeah that's it kids, just patchouli oil, it smells like patchouli, <laughs> okay I'm not going to do this to you, but yeah, patchouli oil is uh, another fragrance that I wear, 
Um, you shouldn't really apply it direct to your skin as it is an essential oil. So I normally mix it with other kinds of oils. So this is um, coconut oil, but non-fragranced and a little bit of almond oil in there as well. So carrier oils. And then I've made, made basically a solid perfume out of that. So this could not need because you'll probably hurt your skin. It's not great to do it. I'm sure there's lots of other reasons why you shouldn't. It's just my understanding. Don't do it. <laughs> I'd say I give that a three bats, three bats and three spiders out of a possible five bats, five spiders. No, no, just five bats. You understand this. You're going to understand this way more than I am. Maybe I should make a chart. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry if I look like I'm looking over here as well. The camera setup that my partner has managed to rig up for me, I was doing horrendously, I could not do it, is um, it's way up here. So I'm kind of looking up like this. So if it looks like I'm kind of staring off into space, I am, but not for mental reasons. <laughs> Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I do obviously have other perfumes that I do like, but I think that's probably my favourite lot. Um, oh, this one. This I love. Okay, so this is Yardley April Violets. There he is. He is not vegan, but he was given to me by someone who is now sadly not with us. And it's a beautiful scent. I love it so much. Um, I'd probably give that a four bats out of a possible five bats. Um, yeah, so really pretty. Didn't come with this on. This is from another thing. I, for some reason, now lives on there. Who knows? Who knows why? Yeah, this just smells like, um, it smells a little bit like Palmer Violets. I'm not going to lie. There are sweets in England, as I'm sure you'll know if you live in England or if you're partial to these sweets, that they were advertised, I think, when they first came out as the perfume sweet, the perfume you can eat. So, yeah, they, they're they just violet-flavoured, little kind of pastel-y, sort of chalky sweets. Um, I'll try and put a picture up here, somewhere here, somewhere here, um, if my video editing allows it. But yeah, they were good. There's probably a four out of five bats <laughs> for taste. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this long rambling video. Um, and if you have any suggestions um, or things you want me to review, things you want me to talk about, then go for it. Send me a message, comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Cool. Uh, I hope you're all having a good day. Take care and bye bye. Oh, I should say before I go that this shirt uh, is from Dracula Clothing, who are awesome. Um, again, not sponsored, just like them. And this jacket I got in a thrift store years ago. So yeah, eyebrows are possibly not my own. Yes. So I'm going to go now. Um, hope this was enjoyable for some of you and possibly slightly enlightening as to the world of vegan goth perfume. Take care everyone and bye bye.